Welcome along. Wednesday night rugby coming at you. Rory O'Connor of the Irish Independent here in studio. Hello, Rory. Evening. And would you look what the cat dragged in? How are you? In bloody studio. There you go. I haven't seen you for ages, Joe. Well, was I just saying to you outside was we were having a quick coffee. I would think it's pre-COVID. Yeah, it could have been. Could have been. It's good to be back. Mm. Up in the big smoke. You look the same. When you look like you're 50, when you're, <laughs> I've looked like that for 30 years, you know, it, it doesn't really change that it's, much. That's starting to pay off now, isn't it? Well, I don't know if it's paying off. It just is what it is. I've, uh, I've grown into my age. Yeah, Look has been consistent. Yeah. Uh, so plenty going on. We had the URC weekend just gone, which was very good from an Irish point of view, four wins. And we have upcoming fixtures, Ulster, Edinburgh, Friday, 7.35. Uh, Leinster away to the Bulls on Saturday at three. Munster back to the scene of the crime. Uh, Sharks Saturday 5.15 and then Connacht go to Glasgow and they will know by the time they go to Glasgow what they need there to secure Champions Cup Rugby 7.35 on Saturday so we'll get into all of that but I want to start with what you said to me outside aside from the fact that I'm fraying around the edges since you lost uh, saw me uh, Sam Prendergast so I thought you were going to play this right down you know I've been there I've seen it all before I've seen the new kids on the block let's it, just wait and see it is my form um, and I don't like overhyping it. And I know Leo came out during the week and said, look, the, the, the media like to um, uh, pretty much like to um, overhype everybody. I, I've watched him a bit this year. I don't know where my hype um, radar goes with it. I, he's a joy to watch. Um, and not because of his skills and you know, playing under 20 is different you can try different things it isn't as disciplined um, it isn't as uh, organised as as other rugby um, but I watched him play down in Cork for a couple of the matches I couldn't get over his composure um, he's a bit of a wonky run which is interesting um, and then you see him outpace a French winger to, to collect a ball, go down, get up, take the tackle. He's a, is he 6'3 or 6'4? He's, he's a big kid. Um, and then you say, well, OK, let him, let him play. Let him kind of figure out where he's going to be, how it's going to manage. And then Leinster do as they've done fairly consistently, which is throw guys in at the deep end at times and the, and the right chance and the right opportunity um, with nothing at stake but pride for the most part. Um, playing at altitude, everybody kind of sucking diesel a little, and he's Mr. Composure for the end of the game to bring a team from behind to win down there with, you know, as you can't win anything with kids. You know, it was, I actually thought it was fantastic. And I don't know if you can hold back the hype, but it's, again, skills are fine. And you, there's huge amounts of kids with talent in the country and you can see them when you watch any of the underage games but it was, he had all the time in the world to do whatever he wanted it didn't seem to matter what was happening whether he was flat to the line whether he was catching a ball in the middle of people deciding to kick it out over his shoulder he was totally unflappable so I was I was excited watching that um, I'd like to see you know he has to be big enough and strong enough to deal with playing at at higher level and there's a um, development uh, phase that he has to go through that but he's just so calm i mean it's it's rare there's um there's only one other guy that is showing that calm at the moment you know oh he's not he's well no he in in terms of calm he's that but i, I but the, sorry that's still a big statement yeah and so so I, I look, I like the fact that you have a young fella um, who comes on and there is a standard that's been set. So we've been complaining, not complaining, but we, you know, we're saying Johnny's playing and Johnny's playing and Johnny's fat. You know, I thought he sh probably should have retired a couple of years ago. Um, I'm happy to eat humble pie on that. Um, nobody has taken the jersey off him. Nobody has looked like taking the jersey off him. And... But I think you're now seeing younger guys coming through saying there's a standard that has to be got there. Mm. That's the standard they have to go for. So I, I've just enjoyed watching him play. I don't know whether you would accelerate him into an Ireland squad or not. I kind of think at times you'd want to. I mean, I, I'm the one... The World Cup. I'm, the, I'm the one who's permanently trying to say, look, you have to look after these guys. You have to try and make certain that they're, 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 they're good enough. Um, but... Um, there, it's it's a str it's gone strange like it's in in the last three or four weeks 
it's gone unusual. So we look at Munster down at at, at the uh, at the weekend. Um, Crowley played pretty well. Um, ben Healy came on and actually took control of the game. I think you've Joey who who would have been there thereabouts has has gone down a little bit, and we hope he gets his confidence back again. Um, there's been a couple of injuries. Ross Byrne has come back in. He has done pretty well. But it's not cut and dried as to who, who it was. It might have been three months ago, and it isn't now. Mm. So I, I don't know. I, I haven't seen enough. But I've seen enough to be excited by the talent that's there. That composure, is a, that's a hard thing to actually get. Mm. So you've seen enough that you wouldn't rule out bringing this guy to the World Cup? I don't, no, I don't, know. I don't, I don't know that. And I need, like, he needs to play... Like he needs to play plenty of rugby, mm. and if you get him to play rugby, you know I don't know whether that fits in yet. And um, there, there's a huge risk in terms of elements of that. But, but I, I just it's a it's a joy watching him, yeah. and I watch. Do you know what? Do you know what was really exciting for me I was down in down in um, um, Mosgrave Park and. Watching it, there was a load of kids, um, you know, I don't know what age they were, sort of teenagers. They were all excited by him. There was a kind of star pulling yeah. power. That's that's a pretty cool thing to have. And uh, look, I don't know. And I, I actually get Leo's idea. Look, let's not overhype this. Um, but um, I still look at French teams tend to put those guys in at nineteen and twenty. Yeah. You know, and so Mac was in at nineteen the night of the drop. Yeah. So you break it down, right? So Saxon's obviously there, and I think Byrne is definitively second choice. And Byrne is going to basically start your whatever's left in Leinster season. He is going to get three or four big games in the Aviva Stadium to prove his case. And I think he's done enough now to say he's probably going. Beneath that, there's very little between the, the chasing pack. Frawley and Harry Byrne have remained with Leinster and will play. We're on the bench for the last couple of games, and Harry Byrne while the game was over against Leicester did have some lovely touches he's almost a forgotten man and you kind of feel like he's lost his kind of momentum that he was he was getting picked ahead of Ross at one stage in the cycle so they're there and have a chance to impress and it's very hard to see how Prendergast gets into the Champions Cup team but could they get him into the URC knockout team they've done it with Ross over the years they do say that his frame needs a bit of they need to put some size on him and that he's done, and that the S&C team are trying to put, almost hold the performance team back or the, the rugby team back in terms of we need to put more size on this kid and the rugby guys are like well, look what he's able to do so then you've obviously got the Jack Crowdy's got two caps and was in every training session for the Six Nations but he can't be that far ahead of Prendergast he's starting against for Munster now he's seen off Carberry to, to a degree so he's ahead of Prendergast but how far ahead of Prendergast is he Carthy is playing for Connacht if they get a run in the in, in the, he's got a long way to come back from but he's playing rugby so I don't think he's that far behind but I wonder with, Farrell's obviously going to be the Ireland coach for the next cycle and, and does he say well let's get, let him go to the World Cup in, at the under 20s World Cup in South Africa and lead that team and win an under 20s World Cup potentially or because he's probably the best under 20 certainly in Europe I haven't seen enough in New Zealand, South Africa, Australia. But or does Farrell go? No, that's a, that's a development tournament. I want this guy training with me on June sixteenth as our fifth out half. I want to see what he can do in that environment. And with that bank of training and three warm up games, can I get him to the level where he's he's there? I think it's an outside bet. But Farrell, who made his professional debut at what sixteen? You know, his son played at seventeen for Saracens, and and you know he was playing for England as, at a very very young age. He's not afraid of giving youth his head. He has promoted young players in the past. It seems very late in the cycle, but this kid has something. And I think Andy Farrell's a very good judge of a player and I I think he'll be excited by what he's seeing. It's just whether he can just bring himself to leapfrog yeah. those guys. But he's been ruthless as well with his selections. Well, I was laughing because I was slagging you off last week for losing the run of yourself for two weeks ago with Ryan Baird. I'm lo- losing the run of myself <laughs> this week and I, I accept that sort of stuff. I think it's a lovely conversation to kind of, to have um, because it's a change from what we would do traditionally, mm. and um, uh, you know, and maybe there are certain things that need to change for us to try and move on to that next level when it comes to to World Cups. And I, I'm kind of comfortable having that as a sort of spitball conversation yeah. because it's an interesting way t- to go about it. But I just, he, but he is calm. You know, there's something... Uh... And there's a seven-day turnaround, at least, between every game at the World Cup. So how much action is your third-choice 10 actually going to get? So how much risk is there in bringing someone 
even Crowley, who's only got two caps and will win a cap probably during the summer, but he's still very unproven at that level. Prendergast is two, three years beneath that. He's got less physical development. He hasn't led through a Champions Cup campaign in the way that Crowley has, although he wasn't even starting at 10 for... Like, the guys ahead of him are not that much further ahead of him. I'm discounting Carberry because he just... I don't see how he get into the World Cup squad from where he is now, but he obviously has 37 caps and is 27 and could do that job if he was... And that's, a, that's a topic we may return to. But from Prendergast's point of view... I suppose he needs to play well enough this week against the Bulls for Leo Cullen to, when when he gets back in Dublin next week to go, how can I leave this guy out? Maybe not against Toulouse, but the following yeah. week they've got a URC semi-final, uh, sorry, quarter-final against possibly one of the South African teams, possibly Connacht, depending on how far. He's going to have to make changes for that if there's a final to come. Does Prendergast get a little bit of a run in those knockout games? If he does well in those, does he come into the conversation? There is a route there, but I think it's I think it's going to be hard for him. So, and so do I. I. Actually, but I look at it in this and say I want to see him play again. Yeah, that's the that's the that, that's the part because I think he offers something that's that's unbelievably exciting. Yeah. So whether that is in time for for this, which I think is incredibly unlikely, yeah, um, or not, but it's it's kind of watch the space really. He's, I thought you were going to throw cold water in this whole thing. Do you know what? I just... I like the game. And I like the game with people who, 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 who light it up a little. I can't think of you being as excited by a young player that we've talked about in the last decade. Um, uh, I, it, a, lot de- a lot depends. A lot of the guys that we've been really excited about tend to have been forwards that are coming through with, mm. a, with a huge amount of talent that's sitting ahead of them. Yeah. And we say, yeah, he's great. He's going to be fantastic. He's going to push him. He's going to push him. And there's a huge amount of miles that are left in the other people. Um, we, are, we have been searching uh, and we are consistently searching and we're still searching for a backup to Johnny. And when you're doing that with a guy who's 37 years of age, that's a kind of, it becomes more uh, front of mind conversation than what's going to happen in two or three years time. For Harry the World Bur- Cup is Harry- now, you know, it's like, you know, I, I do, four, I think do you the, wait for four years? Well, I think the World Cup thing is crazy because say for a second Johnny gets injured group stages and Ross Byrne goes down in the first five minutes of a World Cup quarter or semi-final. That's a lot to ask Sam Prendergast to come on. It is. Of course it but is. But it's a lot to ask Jack Rowley to come on. Of course it is. Mm. And Joey Harvey's got more experience, but he's lost form and lost momentum. And, and if you go back, if you go back a few World Cups ago, um, New Zealand ended up with a guy who had pretty much retired from rugby, playing to put over the last kick yeah. to win. So, look, anything can happen. That's and that's the point for for the conversation. What I would say is that was our first chance to see him yes. playing in a URC a URC game, um, to play as. Uh, composed as he did as well as he did I just want to see more no that's fair so I, think, that's fair. I think that's pretty pretty good so I'm excited by that I'm yeah. allowed to be I think you are allowed to be and do you think I mean the way you're both talking this guy's going to be the Irish number 10 for the guts of a decade I actually think we have options they're just all on different trajectories which we didn't for a while so I think there is a good few guys that are there now I'm still disappointed. I, look, I, I've said this before, and it would be it down to his own um, decision to go, but he wasn't feeling... But when I see Ben Healy coming on the other day and taking control, I'm I'm a bit disappointed because, for me, it looks like Munster are a little bit vulnerable at 10 now again. So, because he's going to go, and who's next up up on that? And uh, I, I again, I, I want to see Joey get his, his mojo back. Um, and and try and you know lead lead from the front again because that's what's required. We need as many. It's looking for two and three players yeah. in each province that are able to control games. So, like I would say, have you know, have Prendergast as soon as we can get him. Let, let, the more he plays, the more we'll see wh- whether that's going to be. Is he going to be there for that? I'm not making that comment, but I'm saying he's exciting here and now. So post World Cup, you've got Ross Byrne, Joey Carberry, 27, 28, and you've got Jack Carty, who's 31, and Billy Burns, I suppose, who hasn't been capped for a while, and I think I've, I would write off, but I suppose he's there starting games for a province. And then you've got this coterie of young talent. I know Frawley's not, he's 24 now, Kieran Frawley. I think he's really good 10. I think they really like him. He would have been capped. He was ahead of Crowley until he got that injury in the A game. You've Crowley, you've Prendergast, you've Harry Byrne, all within between 20 and 24. That's a lot of talent. Yeah. Now, a lot of them are playing for Leinster and can they try and manoeuvre one of them up to Belfast to challenge? Like They've got Jake Flannery up in, in Ulster who they like but 
they still pick Billy Burns when it's crunch time. Um, there is more. We're in a much better place. If Johnny had retired in 2019 after the Japan World Cup, we would Ireland would have been in a much weaker position. Now, Carberry looked like he was ready then and he got loads of injuries, but it was two years with no Joey Carberry. I think we're, Ireland are in a much stronger position now in terms of 10s. And while I think Prendergast can be that player, he'll have some competition. I think Crowley's a really good player. I think it's very soon for him still because he because they didn't pick him a 10 for so long they almost gave Joey so many chances before settling on him it's very late in the season for him to be leading the team um, but it looks like they're going to go with him now and, and come this time next year I think he'll be you know he'll have a lot more Champions Cup experience he'll have a Six Nations with Johnny gone Like the, the whole picture is going to change next year when he's yeah. gone because he's such a commanding figure he's the captain um, like who Leinster go with next season is going to be interesting if Ross Burns away at the World Cup does it open up the picture during the URC for someone to go and take that jersey it's a, it's, it's a very healthy highly competitive without that dominant alpha that Johnny is now Prendergast looks like he might have a bit of that but you know, at 20 it's hard to be as commanding as Johnny is and whether he has that drive <clears throat> look we're, we are of course totally losing the run ourselves because we're basing you do are. on one game at that level but I don't think he'll go I, but I can see a K. I can see Farrell considering it. I think he's too good not to consider it. They got to talk about it. Is is this good? Yeah. Jeez. Yeah. Well, we'll see if he plays a bit, a few more matches. Yeah. Okay. It's all potential now. Yeah. But last Saturday was very. That's impressive. one. That's one point on the graph. Yeah. Fair enough. We'd like a couple more. There you go. That was uh, but a taste of the full rugby conversation. As usual, you can get the full chat wherever you get your podcast. It's waiting for you right now.